Hello and welcome back to Life as Life with Lydia. In today's episode, I'll be looking at how we can be there for a grieving friend or a relative. It's such hard times, especially with coronavirus. So many families around the world are experiencing loss and yeah, like it's it's really um, a very difficult time for many families. At the moment, I am not home. I'm in a quarantine hotel because I just came back from a funeral. Um, lost a young brother. So it's, it's a difficult time. So I thought I could share some thoughts as this is not the first sudden death that I am experiencing but it's the third one in a space of two years. So it's quite um, a reflective time for me and also just, yeah, difficult. I can, I can put it that way, difficult time. I'll straight go into sharing the few points that I came up with in terms of how we can be there for a friend or a relative. And the first one is, recognizing who you are to this person. I think most of the times when people hear the news like, oh, this person has lost a, a family member, you know, somebody close to them. It's like people go into this mode of, oh, it's really sad. I need to be there for them. I need to be there. There's just this need of, I need to be there for them. But it's recognizing who you are to this person because that can also help you how you can be there for this person. Because sometimes you find, and this is not disregarding friendships, but you find that people who you don't regularly talk to, um, all of a sudden are calling you a little too much. And I usually find that people who don't really know you are people that end up asking the wrong questions or saying the wrong thing because to them it's like, I want to converse, I want to show them that I'm there for them. But then in the end, they don't really know what to say and this is why i always say like it's okay to be quiet especially if you are there like face to face i don't mind people coming and if you don't have anything to say to just keep quiet or it could also take just sending a text message to say oh i am here because you can imagine you're going through grieving and then messages keep coming how are you you already know that i'm not okay so are you expecting us to start a, a venting session so you can imagine how many people are texting this person so text messages such as i am here if you need to talk or you know i've got some time between this time because sometimes people are just like oh if you need anything let me know anything is so open it has you know anything anyone everywhere are words that have no exception but we all know that there is an exception so even just being real telling somebody oh you know what from this time to this time i'll be working but i'm free during this period if you want me to to come through if you need me to do some shopping for you um please let me know because i'm going to be free during this period and that's just being realistic um also recognizing especially the first day when you just hear the news it's like everybody just wants to text you they want to call you and you know just and i know it comes from a good place because people just want to be there for you but then it's recognizing that this person is processing um and for instance i could give you an example of myself the three deaths that i have experienced in the last two years have been, I would say, sudden. Um, when dad died, dad, dad died in a road accident and it was in a space of 30 minutes. Within 30 minutes, I was told he's in a road accident, they're at the hospital, and just when I could get my my head around everything that was happening, the news came that, you know, your dad was actually a BID, uh, which is brought in dead. And then there was my brother's, my elder brother's death, it's like, yeah, he's gone through surgery, you know, everything looks like it went okay. But then there's just a few complications. So I wake up in the morning, I'm still trying to wrap my head around whatever is happening. And then boom, within a few hours, I'm told he's gone. And same with, 
you know the recent death like two weeks ago i'm not sure when i'm going to publicize this video but this is like two weeks um when my young brother also just like yeah boom he's gone so the thing with such deaths you are still thinking okay so when people are texting and it's highly likely during this time you are in the denial stage and you're just thinking wow is this what's going on no it's a dream so you can imagine a person going through all this have all these questions and then the question i call it the forbidden question what happened and for me i always ask myself and, and to be fair, there are times when someone shares the news of somebody has died. And I just want to know, like, what really happened? I thought, you know, this person was okay. But then I ask myself, of oh, what use would the answer be? If the person tells me, because most of the times I've noticed when people ask what happened, you explain and they're like, oh, it's really sad. Oh, that's really sad. And they keep saying that's really sad. Oh, it's such a shame. I'm really sorry. And in my head, I'm thinking, hello, I already know it's really sad. <laughs> So you saying it, you rubbing it in, <laughs> like it's just making the things worse. I already know that it's really sad. It is. So it's acknowledging, you know, the stage at which the person is at. And this is why I said recognizing what sort of friendship you have with this person. I usually think people who are in the inner circle sort of know how to deal with the person on the first day and then as days go by you know as people who are sort of in the outer circle and that doesn't mean you are not important but that's just acknowledging that you are not that close to that person because i've, I've found that people in my inner circle sort of know how to deal with me and usually when i find myself managing people because of the things that they are saying and i'm finding them a bit too much are people who are usually in my outer circle so you know knowing what questions to ask at which point we can ask them and also asking ourselves is it necessary if i know then what of what use will it be because most of the time this is when we find i remember somebody sitting with my mom and saying oh i wish you told me that your son had this issue because you know there's this stuff that i sell and this could have been helpful hello this is someone who's just lost her son and then you want to say things that could have been helpful that's not a helpful thing to say you might be thinking you want to be helpful but it is what it is the person is gone and when a person has died that's it they're gone you know there is literally nothing we can do about it and then moving forward to our next point let's accept that this person is going through a life-changing experience i've already talked about some questions that people ask sometimes people just during the funeral during the first day they'll start asking you so what are you going to do are you still going to continue living in this house um where is you know the rent going to come from to pay for this house on a first day or on a second day when somebody has just lost someone i think that's a little too much to ask somebody it's a life-changing experience somebody has just lost a person close to them their life is not going to be the same again that that's just a fact it's not going to be the same again so yes you want to be there but as you are trying to be there for somebody have it in mind my friend my relative is going through a life changing experience so be careful with your selection of words i know right it's so difficult <laughs> to be with a grieving person i totally understand it is because even i who has gone through grief so close i usually find that when i when i hear a friend or a relative is going through grief i'm there asking myself what should i say what can i say because i just acknowledge the fact that we we take people take grief differently even in families you can be siblings you can be you know close family but the way it hits you is different when we lost dad we just had this conversation even as children we were like the way shadi was grieving the way i was grieving meshek taonga and even mom it was different and then we lost our brother the grief was just totally different so acknowledging that fact don't always come from the fact of 
I've gone through it, so I know what I'm talking about. Well, there could be a chance that you don't really know what you're talking about because the way you're handling your grief could be totally different from the way the other person is handling their grief. So don't forget, they are going through a life-changing experience. Moving on to our next point. This relative or friend of ours can be going through a self-discovering moment. Um, I would give an example of myself. When I lost dad, I think that was the first time I experienced grief so close, like real deep. You, I feel like grief, you know, just digs deep. The pain that goes into your heart, it, you can't explain it. It's, it's an explainable pain. And sometimes in my quiet moments, I did think about if somebody close to me died, what would I do? what sort of person do i want to be and i let me just put it out there it was totally different from what i thought and what actually happened when i um experienced loss so close i began to go through a um a self-discovery i discovered different aspects about my personality as well like on any other day i love to socialize i love company and then i realized you know with grief i do actually enjoy more of my own company i love the quietness i just love to lie down of course sometimes um my own company isn't helpful because my brain just goes places but in that moment i also try to recognize the fact that there are people who want to be there for me and i allow them in but that thing of just people from all angles coming i find it a little too overwhelming and in the end i find myself like i am managing people and it, it sort of adds to my stress that was something new i i didn't know that that was part of my personality and then I also just realized like you know grief just makes me get frustrated i am just frustrated with who i don't know you know you feel like you want to shout you want to scream at somebody but then i'm in that space where i'm like no it's not their fault it's not that person's fault this has just happened so you have anger within you that you don't know so you might realize that the friend that you know the relative that you know might be a different person during this time so be careful and also just be open-minded they might not be as welcoming as you think they are on any other day because this person is just going through a self-discovering moment and again we go back to the first point depending on how close you are with this person you can be able to assess at which point do I sit down with this person? At which point can I call and ask, have a chat? What sort of conversations do should we have? There are people who are good. I find that people who I talk to on a regular basis are very easy to get along with even during times of grief because we have so many other things to talk about. But people who you rarely talk to, you find that most of their questions are surrounding your grieving time. And they can't just catch you on a day when you actually don't want to talk about your grieving. You want to talk about something else. So, yeah, acknowledging the fact that somebody may be going through a self-discovering moment. Moving on to the next point. Let them know you are available. So, how do you let somebody know that you are available? Give them a time frame. I am free from this time to this time or i am free on such and such a day if you want to do anything these statements as if you need anything i think that they are nice but it's like it has no exception and it makes it so difficult because when somebody says if you need anything and i'm thinking to myself if i have a meltdown at 2 a.m and i call you are you able to wake up and come over to my place so we can talk or are you able to wake up uh to have a chat i know people are like no that's not what i meant i didn't mean you calling me at 2 a.m <laughs> but yes so saying thing open-ended kind of you know statements as if you need anything let me know you can tell somebody from this time to this time i am free on such and such a day i am free i would like to come and do cleaning 
I would tell you something. I know probably for, for some friends, those people who have moved with me going to funeral houses, it's very rare you would see me sitting, you know, in a setup. Like, you know, the way, the way we grieve, um, like in Zambia, obviously now during COVID times, especially this time when I went, I found like the way we are grieving is totally different. We are not having that situation of people sitting on the floor and meeting up different types of people most of the times you find me in the kitchen <laughs> it's either i'm helping out cooking just doing something i like to get busy keep my mind busy you know do do something that is lessening your burden because i usually find talking a bit difficult because i'm just like i don't know what to say like even even when you want to encourage you know it's it's very easy to say things like it's the Lord's will, um, of which it is, it is. But in the moment when things have just happened, you are there and you don't know at which state this person is in their mind at what they're thinking. So you want to be careful. And that's why for me, I just find it easy to be busy. It's either I'm helping out clean or, you know, with logistics, just um, keep busy. So let this person know that you are available. Send them a text to say, if you need to talk, I am here. So the boy is in their court. They know that they have options. You tell them if you need shopping, I am here to do some shopping for you. Are there any logistics that need to be done? You know, recognizing things that need to be done to just lessen their burden. Because, you know, having people around, people who go and do the shopping, people who are cooking, it's really helpful. Sometimes it may look like one of those things, but it is actually helpful having people around who are helping out with cooking, um, with logistics and all that stuff. It's really helpful. So letting your friend know that you are available. Moving on. I think I've already alluded to this point, but helping them on their own terms and not your own terms. I think I had mentioned earlier that there, there are times when we want this goodness to reflect on us. It's about me. So we go all out. But then you find that the things that you are doing might not really be things that this person finds helpful. Sometimes just because, you know, you, you might be a person who enjoys talking. And then you go to a friend who, at that point, they don't feel like talking, to be honest. They can just appreciate you being there with them, quiet, in silence. And then you go there and you're talking, 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 you know, you are reading all these um, encouraging things and all that stuff. And probably in that moment, maybe what the person really needs is just company, someone seated there and quiet. Like I said, I, I find myself to be that sort of person when I'm grieving. I love the silence, you know, to just sit, you know, quiet. I remember... Um, when I had traveled to Zambia for dad's funeral and I was told, oh, there are some people who want to come over and see you. I got so nervous. But for some reason, I don't know what really happened. Those people didn't come through. And I was like, Whew. but one person came and I remember she came for a good 10 to 15 minutes. It was quiet. And trust me, I enjoy that time. I think from in that 15 minutes, she only said probably a sentence or two and it was just quiet she gave me a tight hug and i enjoyed that i was like this is perfect you know we don't have to talk about anything this is great and i felt like they did something that i actually appreciated so it's doing that which you know recognizing what is it that's going to be helpful and even just asking what is it that you want to do if your friend is in a space where they can tell you like i said recognizing how close you are to this person there are certain questions that you can ask i mean with with my close my inner circle they can ask what what is it that you want to do today do you want to talk and i can just be comfortable and say no i don't want to talk and i know i won't be offending somebody um rather than me finding myself managing people because yeah they are there and i feel like i'm obliged to talk back to conversate even when i feel like i don't want to conversate above all pray for this person prayer moves mountains so pray because we need to recognize the fact that 
there are places where prayer can touch that we can't. God offers unspeakable peace, unspeakable comfort that we as human beings can't because we do not know exactly how this person feels. No one knows what the next person feels. I know this is a statement that is loosely used sometimes like, oh, I know how you feel because, you know, I have gone through it. You can relate, but knowing exactly how someone feels, mm -mm, that is not easy. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I found it therapeutic as well because it was like a venting session. <laughs> Thanks to YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's get comforting and loving to our friends. We all need some love in one shape or another and we all need a shoulder to lean on in one way or another when we go through grief. Bye-bye.